Welcome back to the link, everybody. Uh, you may not know, but it is of critical importance that August is actually National Eye Exam Month. So the doctor is in, my friends. Link found, let's go take a little trip. Um, you're joining us here in Harmon. We're going to take a little stroll down Marine Corps Drive, up Airport Road, through Tizen, all the way through Mighty. And we're going to go up to Sinahania, where our friend Dr. Peter Lombard is in his clinic right now. Um, Doc, always good to see you. It has been a while. You and I have actually been working on this show for a while to the point where both of us actually still had the majority black hair so you know we you've been a member of the link show for a while now <laughs> yeah it's uh this is uh, coming on for something a little different a little bit more in my wheelhouse than than uh coronavirus um, yeah so happy to be here thanks for having me yeah of course and you know i remember that uh, it, uh for me it was a very um eye-opening you know pardon the pun you know given your <laughs> given your profession but um it was a real good interview that uh that i did with you last year because you were saying right at the time when people were like okay i've been on a computer you know double digit hours a day like you know mm -hmm. everyone from you know uh people in their mid 40s and you know uh, retirement people all the way down to like little kids and you were actually giving some very um very helpful tips about you know how to preserve your eyes how to take it uh take care of your eyes and everything so that you would have longevity and you know you wouldn't develop problems and everything like that i was thinking maybe for this morning's interview we could kind of say there's a lot of people um, saying we should go back to online learning. A lot of most kids are like doing face to face right now. So as a eye doctor and everything like that, what would be your advice to people as you know, if we if we should have to go back to sitting in front of screens um, for an extended amount of time again? So hopefully we can get some, you know, proactive uh, activity. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's great that we have a month where we can highlight the importance of eye exams you know, in the spectrum of everything else going on around us. Um, may not seem like it's is as important and, and rightly so, but you know it is important for us to you know uh, to, to think about these things, especially uh, in children who uh, who may have uncorrected you know re refractive errors. They need glasses, um, and some it's remarkable how many times we see a, a, a child come in for their first visit. Usually, it's because they've been referred by the school for uh, you know not passing a screening exam. But it's pretty remarkable how many how many kids have uh, pretty pretty big need for glasses and they just never knew it. Um, you know, so one of the biggest things that we think that we would, would be an indicator would, would be a child squinting. Okay, squinting is a big, um, uh, it's a mechanism where you can kind of overcome a little bit of refractive error. So that's one thing to be on the lookout for. Uh, but you can just also, you know, just be observant of your child and, and see if, there, if there's any um, instances in which it seems like they're not seeing things as well as you think they should be able to. Of course, eye alignment's a big thing too. So if one of the eyes are deviated in or deviated out, that could be a sign of, of much more significant pathology. But, you know, generally, I think um, we, we do like to see kids get, get an exam as early as six months. Um, and then after that, if everything looks good, you know, somewhere between three and six years old. But, you know, the reality is if you get a, an eye exam and everything looks good um, and the child isn't complaining of anything, you're probably in the clear for every, every few years coming back to get an eye exam. Um, you know, when it comes to the screen time, you know, it is it is important to make sure kids are allowing themselves to you know, rest their eyes a little bit, um, look away from the screen, look off into the distance. The biggest problem I think we talked about last time was the, the, the I hate to use the word epidemic, but the epidemic of myopia or nearsightedness is getting worse. Uh, more and mm. more kids are becoming more and more nearsighted. And a lot of that's because of this increased screen time that we've had uh, during the epidemic. And it's a real thing. I mean, there, there's data that shows kids becoming more and more nearsighted. So that means Remember, myopia means you can see better up close and not quite as well in the distance. Um, and and we measure refractive error in what we call diopters. So somebody that's nearsighted has a negative prescription. So you might see somebody that has a minus two prescription. Their nearsightedness is about maybe this you know this far away. Um, somebody who's a minus five, they can see clearly this far away. But then everything else is super blurry. So what we're seeing is. This progression of myopia, somebody who's minus two progresses to minus three to minus four, minus five, and that ha is happening faster and faster. And we know there's an association with the amount of, of time that you spend looking at things close to you. So that is a, a very good reason for kids that are myopic to get annual eye exams. And we actually have some some uh, things that we can do to help slow that progression down because in, in, when you're older, my myopia can cause some problems too. Mm -hmm. Now, there are, there are some people in our community who might say, like, uh, certain government leaders tend to be myopic, but that's a completely different, like, interview for a different time, right? Um, uh, how about, uh, Doc, maybe more more generally speaking, I guess, do does eye dryness fall under, um, like, a normal eye exam and everything? Because I know, you know, you go to you go to the sure. store, the pharmacy, and it's like, you, you know, you have 10,000 different brands of, um, 
of eye drops and everything that's like you know do you want nice moist eyes or the cooling effect and everything like that is that just savvy clever marketing or is that an actual thing that could lead to more problems substantially down the line absolutely uh, you know almost every patient that we come in will have some set of, some sort of symptoms of dryness now thankfully they're usually mild but um, they can be very severe and when you're somebody who uh, wears contacts that's a big red flag for having much more dryness um, if you've had prior refractive surgery like lasik or prk in the past uh, some people don't realize or, or don't remember that those lasers cut through the nerves on your cornea so you cannot detect when your eyes need tears and so you're not making as many tears that's a big a risk factor for, for dryness as well and just age in general and, uh, as you age you, do, you make less tears you also develop something called blepharitis where your eyelid margins where your lashes come out they get a little bit dirty and full of debris the oil glands don't secrete as well as they can so um, uh, it's especially when you spend a lot of time on, on, on screens as well. Um, when you're when you're focused and intent on what you're reading, you're not blinking as much. So um, that uh, we often have times patients say while they're doing work, they'll they'll have tears coming out, and they don't understand how that's actually a reflex response to dryness. And so you'll tell them, oh, your eyes are dry. You actually need to use some artificial tears a little bit more, more frequently. We say no, but I'm tearing. Well, that's that's the reflex response to the dryness that sets in. So, mm -hmm. um, and there is a huge, you know, you go to the eye drop section of the store, it can be quite confusing. There's so many brands, you know, there are some brands that we generally think are, are um, uh, a little bit more reputable in terms of what they're giving you. Unfortunately, they're also a little bit more expensive, you know, to get a good bottle of eye drops, you know, you're probably gonna have to spend $15 at, you know, at Payless uh, or Kmart or, you know, find them online for a little bit cheaper maybe, but um, the brands like Gentile, Refresh, Sustain, these are generally the brands that, that we find a little bit more reputable. You, you want to stay away. Some people don't know this, but you want to stay away from using things like products like Visine or Clear Eye. Uh, the ones that take the redness mm. away, they actually do a good job of that, but they don't do anything to treat the underlying problem. They have the medicine in them that causes the blood vessels to constrict. So they absolutely will make your eyes look less red, but the, the effect is short lived, maybe two or three hours. And then what happens, the, the blood vessels dilate again, your eyes look red. And so what we see sometimes patients use the Visine all the time, but there's nothing in the Visine necessarily that, that's treating the underlying dryness. So they'll often reach for those as well because they're a little bit less expensive. But um, uh, we always uh, have to educate folks a lot that if you're gonna get a, a drop that's gonna help the dryness, please try to stay away from those drops to take the redness away. Interesting, because you know, so, I, I um, think in terms yeah. of brand brand awareness, like if, you know, if someone's buying mm -hmm. that for the very first time or like very infrequently, that would be the first thing they reach for just because they're like, oh, I've seen, Absolutely. you know, I've seen the commercial, I've seen banner ads all over the internet for, you know, Visine or Clear Eyes and everything like that. W would you actually recommend then, because I know these days with eye drops, there are certain certain things that take care of certain functions. Is it even right. more advantageous to buy like two or three eye drops at a time? Well, um, I, I discourage people from using like a Visine Clear Eye product all the time. Every once in a while, it's okay. You know, you're going to a mm -hmm. function and you just want to make sure people, you're looking your best and you're presentable. Uh, you just don't want to be unhappy of using it all the time. So yeah, if you wanted to have that for certain occasions, but your 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 go-to should be a good quality product like, like Refresh is a good product. And even then it gets even more confusing. If you look at all the different types of Refresh, they have some that are formulated for mild dryness or severe dryness. They actually make ointments for the eyes for real severe dry eyes as well. So, um, and then there's actually uh, there's prescription eye drops that we can use um, that are actually quite expensive that can help people with severe dry eyes. And and this is just something again that that you know to tie it back into the screen use. It's something that uh, dry eyes can definitely exacerbated by uh, by screen time and, and doing a lot of reading. Okay. Well, I I do want to then thank you for bringing up um, screen time, Doc, because I did want to talk about the, the fact that you know. Um, everyone from young kids to you know those of us in middle age and everything like that we're on screens all the time usually even multiple right from you know like little tiny smartphones all the way up to ipad pros and everything um can you give us your take as a as an eye as a per medical professional on things like artificial light you know like i've seen some people you know set their kindle and they, they set the font really really big and their brightness you know to an ob obnoxiously really you know in, in either pole right they set it really really bright or really really dim because they were like i don't want to stress out my eyes and everything like that do doing things like that even though they, they may have good intent uh wind up yeah. having like negative effects well the reality is uh the uh the screen use is, is not likely to cause any harm or damage um the, if you you know one of the biggest fears is the blue light component that comes from led screens and that's a lot of what's driving the um the 
the, the, the push or the marketing to, to promote these blue light blocking eyeglasses. And the reality is if just the ambient light that you get from the sunlight, there's so much more blue light that enters your eyes from ambient light than you could ever get from a tiny screen. The only little piece of data that makes a little bit of sense and, and you can actually back it up with some, some science is that if you use a lot of, of, of screen, if you have a lot of screen time right before you go to bed, there is a chance that that extra blue light that you're getting at that period of time, it will disrupt your sleep cycle. So if you're doing a lot of work on a screen before bed and you have a really poor sleep cycle or you just don't feel like you're getting rested, that might be one situation where you'll either say, let me do my screen time at least a few hours before bed, or you could try blue light blocking eyeglasses and see if you think it helps you. Because anecdotally, I, I do know some some people and some patients who will absolutely swear by the by the benefits of blue light. Um, the data there is not not great in terms of um, uh, how beneficial it, it is, but um, you know it's it's something that you can try, uh, especially if you just buy. I, I even saw Circle K; they had blue light blocking glasses that were like six or seven bucks. I mean. If if uh, if that's how you want to just try and see if you like it, then and then you know you can spend a little bit more on a prescription pair later. But mm -hmm. um, uh, you know that's uh, other than that, you know, changing the the brightness on your screen, uh, whether it's high or low, isn't going to cause a lot of damage to you. If it's not bright enough, you might be straining a little too much. Could cause some headaches, but um, but generally speaking, um, you know do what's comfortable. That's, that's what I tell patients, do what's comfortable um, and, and don't really worry that, that it's going to be causing any harm. All right. I can live with that. And then doc, final question. And I saved this one for the last, cause I know like you and I are both big sports enthusiasts, right? So um, what is typically the advice that you give, you know, to fellow athletes and, you know, um, you, we may be talking uh, middle school kids, you know, professional athletes, people like yourself who, you know, competed at the Olympic level. Um, you know, the show hard knocks this year is focusing on the Dallas Cowboys, of course, right? They had a running back, who was debating whether he should wear contacts or wear like the big Eric Dickerson goggles and everything like that. When it comes to athletes in different sports, do you actually recommend wearing contacts while you compete or if you can't wear goggles, then wear goggles? Wow, that's interesting. I, I think I would have a conversation with them about having refractive surgery, to be quite honest. When you get mm -hmm. LASIK or PRK, you don't have to worry about the glasses or contacts. And, and I think um, uh, in generally uh, you're going to get better vision with contacts versus glasses or goggles. There's just a certain amount of distortion that can happen with the, with the lens in front of your eye versus having a contact lens that's sitting right on the eye. But that comes with other risks. You know, if it pops out during the, I don't know if you saw that there was a, a Taekwondo Olympian or something that, the, the, yeah. their contact <laughs> fell off and they licked it and put it back on their eye and all the ophthalmologists in the world were like you know, like screaming um but and i um, would think that would be a risk if you're if you're dealing with a contact sport too you know like if, if you've got some foreign object in your oh, eye absolutely. and then you know say you get a yeah. you know, detached retina or something like that that can be dangerous right? yeah i mean I, I, of course everything comes with with its own risk even refractive surgery but i think if you want to be uh, yeah, if you don't want to deal with the, the potential problems that you can have with contact lenses or goggles, then I, I would definitely look at refractive surgery. Unfortunately, we don't have any options in Guam. We did have a doctor, uh, Dr. Flowers, he used to come from uh, from Southern California, um, and he would do a, a handful of cases of uh, LASIK and PRK before the pandemic. Um, I don't know if, if he plans to come back out. He used to come to uh, Island Eye Center. Um, and uh, But besides that, um, you know, you got to go off island. Uh, a lot of people used to go to the, the Philippines, but of course you can't do that these days. Uh, so Hawaii is really the, the closest place, but unfortunately you got to, you know, plan on spending, you know, between two to $3,000 minimum per eye to get refractive surgery done, you know, and uh, thankfully there's lots of places in Guam to get, to get eye exams. Of course, we're not, we're certainly not the only show in town. You've got some places in the mall, uh, Danny shopping center, ideal optical, uh, vision express, um, the course places with licensed optometrists and ophthalmologists, Take your vision center, SCA vision center, um, uh, St. Uh, Lucie's uh, has an ophthalmologist over there. So lots of places to get your eye exam, uh, especially when you get older, you know, if you're 60 plus, if you've got diabetes, you got diabetes, you have to get an annual eye exam. I yep. know that we see a lot of patients that have not had that done. And um, sometimes we see patients when it's kind of, it's late starting treatment on them. And unfortunately they've already had some vision loss. All right, everybody. So August is National Eye Exam Month. That means you got a few more days to get your eyes checked. So please go check out uh, Dr. Peter Lombard over at Lombard Health over in Sinahania. Doc, always a pleasure, man. We appreciate it. Thanks so much. Take care, Jason. All right, we'll see you next time. And we will see you guys on the flip side of this break. We are bringing in two attorneys to look at some of the 
legal aspects of some of the possible restrictions coming out. We got Tom Fisher and Rachel Timon out with Dudu joining us in the Zoom room right after this. The KUAM Podcast Network is back and on demand, featuring a great variety of podcasts from our island and region, including culture, lifestyle, awareness, crime, politics, commentary, comedy, and entertainment. Available on most streaming platforms. The KUAM Podcast Network. Subscribe and listen now.